we will be showing step by step how to paint this varnished piece of furniture. Very important first step is to clean the surface properly using lacquer thinners and a piece of matting cloth. We will be starting with our drawers. So these will be the areas that I will prep and this is key to success. So thoroughly wet a cloth with some thinners I make sure that the thinners don't reach my skin and work in a well-ventilated space. Wipe clean well and if need be, do this step more than once to ensure that your surface is grease-free, oil-free and dust-free. I will allow for the thinners to evaporate, more or less 40 minutes is required and then I'll start the creative process. I'm going to start working on the top drawer and for this technique I'm going to use the colour Maestro Pour some out in a paint tray. Work with a 110mm foam roller. Apply a generous amount of paint on the roller. And I'll be painting onto my drawer. This is my first coat, my base coat, and I'll allow for this drawer to dry and continue with the next one. On this one we are going to be creative and we are going to apply beautiful authentic chocolate stencil design. Secure it with some masking tape. Make sure I Position it nice and straight. I will be working with stencil of Paris and a paint scraper. This will give the stencil work a raised embossed effect. Scoop some from your jar. Hold the stencil flat and spread it out evenly onto the surface. Remove my stencil while still wet. Just remove all the excess. Now for the last section, I'll just repeat my pattern again. Way 
wait for my stencil of Paris to dry, two to four hours depending on the thickness of the application as well as the weather, and then I'll show you what happens next. On the drawer that I started painting right in the beginning, I'm going to apply my second coat of Maestro. This is a stunning warm green grey colour. I'm using a foam roller. When working with a foam roller, initially you'll see some air bubbles. Don't stress about it, that's just the air inside the roller that's being transmitted onto your surface. Work with a generous amount of paint, no hard, aggressive strokes, just a gentle application. And I will leave to dry for another 20 to 40 minutes before I continue with the next step. This is a creative process and things might change as I progress this paintwork. I'm going to start applying a layer of Maestro on these burnt areas on the furniture piece. I'm also going to accentuate the detail here by painting it and later distressing it. I do want to keep the frame in wood for the moment, it might change. And then I'm thinking of only painting this area. It has got nice detail, but I don't want to paint the inside of these doors due to the beautiful artwork on it. Um, so let's start. Depending on the size of the area you're working on, you will need different tools. The artist brush will come in handy to cut the cut lines around the handles. A Hamilton's enzyme brush is a lovely soft bristled paint brush to get a very even application on smaller detail and areas like over here and here and to even anything out I will use my foam roller. I have also cleaned the varnish surfaces that I will be painting well by using lacquer thinners and allow a 40 minute drying time before I start painting. Let's get going. Our paintwork is now complete and I will continue with the drawers. My stencil of Paris has dried. It has left a beautiful embossed raised finish of the stencil work on the drawer and I'll now use Maestro again and just paint on top of my stencil work. My paintwork is complete. I will now allow for my paint to dry and while I'm waiting I'm going to continue with my next drawer with a different technique. I'm going to work with a colour level slide and the stencil of Paris paste to create a, a raised and also a non-white stencil effect. So I'm going to use the paint to colour my stencil of Paris paste the stencil design I'm going to work with is a beautiful leaf design. First very important step is to scoop some of the stencil of Paris paste from the jar. I'm going to work on my drop sheet. Okay. 
and then I'm going to add a small amount of paint. So I'm just dipping my scraper in my paint and this will be a subtle change in colour but it won't be completely white. My stencil work is complete and the repetition work is done. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm going to allow for this drawer to dry and while it's drying I'm going to apply a wash technique on the drawer that's sitting and waiting. I'm going to use a damp piece of matte and cloth and the colour levels light. Apply some paint on my piece of cloth and on top of my raised stencil work I'm going to do a wash technique and what this will do it will just emphasize the pattern and create some beautiful texture finishes. Now that the drawers are done we are going to start sanding all the crevices and detail on this unit just to emphasize the detail. I'm going to use a 100 grit piece of sandpaper and start sanding. done next I'll be putting back the drawers and then I will just as a final touch seal the top. Choco has a built-in sealant but we do want to ensure that the top has an extra layer of protection so let me show you how. Now that our drawers are in and our paintwork is complete, we are just going to add extra protection on the top surface and that we will do with Choco Paints Clear Glaze. This will make the surface more stain resistant, water resistant and UV resistant. Um, so we just want to make sure that it's properly protected for all those unnecessary events. How you mix according to the instructions is three parts glaze, one part water, but I want to manipulate the sheen level. So I want a less, sat less satin finish. I will therefore mix one part glaze with one part cooled boiling water. The reason for the cooled boiling water is due to the fact that tap water contaminates paint products over time. So whatever is left, you can put away for later use. So one part clear glaze, one part cooled boiling water and then I will apply my glaze layer with a damp microfiber cloth that I have here at the back. So I've just dampened it with water, squeeze out excess moisture, dip the microfiber cloth in my glaze mix make sure my cloth absorbs glaze everywhere squeeze out to remove excess and now i will make sure that i apply an even coat work in a well lit space so that you can see that you apply everywhere 
even. And I'm done and I'll move it into position. All that this dining room still needs is a place to dine. So see you next time.